The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 332 Lingering Scars. Feeling better? Amber asked, sitting upright and leaning against Valet for support. You Riverfall mares are suicidally nice, Valet grunted, stiffened from the contact. Trusting your wrong pony? Maybe even me? Maple trusted me to get her out of a scrape in Anridge safely that she wouldn't have been in if she hadn't come from my trapped rear and I got bodied by some goons that only wanted me and then she got stabbed. A smile teased its way across Amber's lips. You didn't answer my question, though. Yeah, Valet sighed, looking away. I am. A little. Thanks for being cool with all that, by the way. But I still have no idea what to do now. If it were up to me, Amber mused, unable to rub her chin and thought, I think you should lay here with me a while more and keep me company listening to the rain. It won't be better written for a whole week, but it's still kind of lonely. Valet shrugged. I've heard it rain a lot in Ironridge. It rains all the time there. Amber grinned at her, trying to catch her eye. But does it rain against a roof right over your head when you have nothing more important to do than sit back and think about how lucky you are not to be soaked? How important is anything I do? Valet didn't meet her gaze. Like, I'd love to matter, don't get me wrong. But the whole not-really-a-pony thing doesn't matter to me, Amber said. Where you came from or what's inside you, I mean. I mean, it matters, but in a good way. I think you can want stuff and be important. Valet flopped onto her back, causing Amber to collapse with a squawk. See what I meant about talking about this making me sound edgy? Seriously, all that stuff's so obvious I should know that, but I... Ugh. I told you, I can't figure out what to do. You know where to go with my life, even assuming it's mine to go somewhere with. Eh, you keep saying that just because you're not the original Valet, there's something bad about that, Amber remarked. You know, everyone says the Moonglass spirits are bad because they can possess ponies when you put them inside or something. But didn't you also say your sister isn't that one you're wearing? She pointed a feeble hoof at Valet's necklace. She's not bad. She probably just wants to be a pony again if she can think in there. And I bet if you stuck her inside Willow or someone else without a cutie mark, she'd change them just like the ones from space, maybe not even because she wanted to. And you seem like a real person. Whether you were originally a pony or not, for all we know, there's nothing wrong with that at all, and you've always just wanted to survive. Valet looked like she didn't know whether to risk considering it. That doesn't change the whole... Eh, I don't know. What do you think I came from, then? The moon glass? Where in space? What do you think not knowing makes it bad, Amber countered. Even good things can be used for evil. My cutie mark? Valet glanced at her flank. That, for one... I'm a personality attached to a power that's really good at fighting things. If some alien wanted to send a big soul bomb here but make themselves out to be friendly, you'd think they'd have sent cutie marks for sniffing flowers or something. Or something. Amber touched her shoulder. But didn't you also say that even with no idea what was going on, you didn't kill any of the scientists when you first came to? You said Niala taught you about life in Ice Reach afterward, but if you had been sent as a weapon, wouldn't you have killed them and not looked back? Uh, Valet slumped. Sent! Honestly, I just wonder if by total fluke there was a rock sailing through space with a pile of spontaneously occurring not souls inside. Seriously, this whole thing is just... Eh. It doesn't sound like a fluke to me, Amber replied. What if someone in this world flung it up a long time ago so it could fall back down later, like a time capsule of life in case something ended a world and it needed to be repopulated? Or what if there was another world floating out there in space that didn't, and the moon glass was like a way for the people there to try and survive. What if I looked into all that, Valet interrupted to say, snooped and sniffed around to find all the leading theories on it in Anridge. Ponies there don't talk about this stuff all that much, but the odds are pretty good it came from the moon and wasn't sailing around in space for a long time. The Yaks think their big war several decades before caused it, and the Griffins say there was some moon event right before it they call a lunar flare. And stuff coming from the moon, well... Amber tried to shrug. Maybe the lunar flare was a coincidence? Or maybe there are ponies on the moon? Maybe. Valet looked away. The one legend I've heard, and mind you, the only bad ponies I've met have been ones that were bad at history and didn't like me, is that there's a so-called mare in the moon there who will get you if you're naughty. I mean, it's easy to see where a legend like that would come from. You look at the full moon when there's no clouds, it kind of looks like a pony face. But, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm the mirror in the moon. All I know for sure is that I feel like a pony. I really wish I was one. And sometimes tell myself I'm not. Without understanding anything will help me. It's not like you can change the past anyway. I just need... something. 
Sounds like what she needed is a hug, Amber guessed, flopping next to her and wrapping her forelegs around Valet's torso. Hey, let go, Valet protested, but didn't struggle. After several seconds, she added, Mind the wing, it's still kind of sore. Sorry, Amber murmured, shifting away from the bandages. For a minute, Valet soaked up the attention. Eventually, she blinked and said, You know I'm technically eight, right? Amber stared past at her, thinking, Huh, I wonder how that works. If your body can change depending on your cutie mark, how do bat ponies age normally? How old do you think you... Valet was when she touched the moon glass. How old do you feel like you are? Uh, Valet shrugged in Amber's embrace. Honestly, I was only around other bad ponies for less than a year, and I don't think Niala covered that. I know when I first appeared, I looked like a filly, but grew up pretty quick. I was already an adolescent when I left, just shy enough of being fully grown that me getting promoted on Herman's defense force got a bunch of existing ponies mad because they thought I was a kid. Don't know how old the old me was either. By logically, that probably makes me early 20s, if it even works that way. Mentally, I haven't a clue. Some days I'd love to write off what I do or don't understand as being immature, and others I feel like I'm surrounded by big babies who are twice my age. For all I know, given moon soul time, I could be like a thousand. I've definitely been horny for a while, though. I think. You think? Amber giggled and poked her limply. How can you not be sure about that? The same way you can know nothing else about the rest of what your life is. Well, I sighed and closed her eyes. Say, there's a minor officer in my ranks I really want to bug. I pull up his files, see he's got a special sampony, find out where she lives, then make eyes at her and send her a letter about her butt with my name on it. If her faces look like turnips, I get my laughs, mission accomplished. But when I enjoy doing that, am I enjoying the prank or, you know... If I'm teasing Sparky about being cute when she wants my attention for some truth-related thing, I sort of help her behind everyone's backs. Is that because I like her, or like being a pest, or... I just don't know. Amber hummed in solidarity. Ever do the same thing to stallions? Once or twice. And do you get the same warm fuzzy for making them blush? Valet didn't even hesitate. No, nah, definitely not. And how do you feel about me hugging you now? Amber asked, nestling her cheek against Valet's coat. <sighs> but I wouldn't worry about it. Amber winked, noting that she had made Valet blush. And you're definitely acting older than A2. Foles that young don't think about those things. I have it on good authority from a lot of friends with folds of their own. Valet relaxed, seeming to take her words to heart. Except for Starlight, she pointed out. Solid is special, Amber rebutted, and definitely not eat. Her situation is very different from a normal filly's. So is mine, Valet grumbled. My entire childhood lasted like a year. Sounds like you have some lost time you need to make up. Amber closed her eyes. Once I'm up and about, you're welcome to hang out with me around town if you like. Some of the stuff your ponies say I should grow up, but they're just jealous they don't allow themselves to have fun doing things like racing fools across the town or finding the fastest way to climb a building from the outside. Meh, sounds cool. Valet went completely limp, eventually extending her good wing over Amber like a blanket. You know, I'm actually not feeling bad right now. Thanks for... Uh, thanks. Amber grinned into her dark gray coat. I'm glad we could help each other out. I was pretty bored by myself in here with nothing to think about anyway. Meh, Valet repeated. For a moment, Neaver spoke. Enjoying having something to enjoy, Amber asked. Maybe, sort of, yeah... Valet shifted, rearranging herself in the bed. Do you, uh, mind talking about anything else later? I've got to get it from my head that this is actually happening right now. Sure. Amber snuggled closer. I'll probably be limp and invalid for a while longer, Eddie. Pow! Greetings, friends! A very loud, bombastic voice echoed through the stairwell and closed door, perfectly audible over the deafening hiss of the rain. After the rain abruptly cancelled my epic rendition of the Battle of the Flame District, I retired to a local abode to continue storytelling, but was eventually evicted when... Gerardo! Maple's voice shrieked. You just broke my door and shook ten gallons of water all over my storefront and my customers! Valet and Amber looked at each other with wide eyes as a din began to rise from the room below. Want to stay up here and pretend nothing is happening? Amber furtively asked, not breaking her hug. Oh, no way! Valet extracted herself from the bed, licking her lips. 
bad Bozo will probably come up here and see us, and if I'm going to open up and be a big softy, I need a bit more time than this to shout it to the world. Besides, smells like tasty drama. She raised an eyebrow. So, uh, mind not telling anyone that I actually let someone cuddle me? Especially Iron Flags. She'd be super jealous. A secret, huh? Amber grinned conspiratorially. Now that sounds like fun. Go! Belay stood up, adjusting the sling, holding her wing steady while it healed. Need a lift? I think so, Amber panted, trying to get her hooves beneath her. Just because I know that sword's secret doesn't mean it'll give up without a fight. End of chapter 332